Hi, it's June 9th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm Mike Stanton here with David Young from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. David, thanks for taking some time this week. After a, a pretty busy month of May with a lot of headlines, both on the economic news side, uh, this week was a little calmer in the markets. What were you watching? Uh, yeah, so you know, at the end of last week, we are fresh off a debt ceiling resolution, um, but a hotter than expected jobs report. Um, so when we look at you know talks about the recession, the future rate decisions, all that seems to be still a bit murky. Um, you know, the market will look to see how the Treasury replenishes its general account um, or its reserves and how that affects liquidity. I think that's going to be um, kind of a focal point of um, the market as we uh, see how, you know, the Fed and, and the Treasury play this out. Uh, in terms of uh, economic releases this week, it was pretty light. Um, we did have initial jobless claims yesterday. Uh, that did touch 261,000, which is actually the highest level since October 2021. And so that kind of leads me into what does that mean for next week's FOMC meeting? Uh, as we all know, we've had 10 consecutive rate hikes, and now there's a 70% chance the Fed pauses. Um, fortunately for the Fed, they will be able to look at May's CPI number before the meeting. And so just like the entire market, we'll have to wait and find out next week. So looking inside how the market performed this week without that big economic news, there were some interesting developments on the technical side in particular. Uh, what did you see develop on muni yields? Yeah, so for munis, um, you know, right now, I believe there's a net negative supply of about $25 billion over the next month. 30-day um, visible supply is maybe somewhere, you know, around that $8 billion mark. So the technicals kind of point to, um, you know, munis uh, maybe having a positive performance. Um, you know, the 10 year ratio is at 70%, the 30 year ratio is at 90%. Um, so we, you know, we'll have to continue to wait and see kind of how everything plays out. But ahead of the FOMC meeting, uh, you know, it's kind of the same as always where people kind of sit on their hands and, and wait for that. Uh, for Lipper, uh, we did see a, a trend break here. Uh, we had 460 million of weekly inflows, uh, which broke a 16-week streak of outflows. And that only makes the net negative supply situation a little uh, bigger, although certainly swamped by the uh, impact of uh, coupon payments and maturing bonds. So over in the new issue market, you know, at some level, the municipal market got back to what it does best. Uh, instead of watching the debt ceiling, it was allocating money to new projects. Uh, what kind of uh, new issue sales did you see? So this week, we saw about $11 billion price. Um, for BAM, it was a very busy week. We had 19 transactions for 236 million a par. Uh, we also provided three sureties with a total limit of 7 million. Uh, two, that, uh, two deals that I want to highlight here are uh, $164 million California Alvord USD GO transaction that was led by Stiefel and a $32 million Oklahoma City hotel tax transaction, which we also provided a surety on, uh, led by Raymond James. And uh, viewers looking for more information about the Alver transaction in particular, we do have a Credit Insights video with Mark Capel from our West Coast Regional Office uh, available on our website, so you can uh, check in uh, with that. What about the uh, coming week? I think the calendar, the insured calendar, is even a little bit busier, even as the total calendar gets lighter. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of surprising when we see that. Um, you know, we're really busy next week. We have a ton of deals expected to price. Um, the calendar, the overall calendar, is at about three and a half billion. Last time I checked. Um, which is light uh, and as expected, you know, ahead of the FOMC meeting. Um, but we do have a $209 million Texas Greater Texoma Utility Authority um, that's actually backed by the city of Sherman Water and Sewer. And that one will be led by Baird. And Ben O'Malley has a Credit Insights video about that one on our website. Really interesting transaction. As we said, new money uh, for the water and sewer system, specifically to support investments in the area, which is becoming a hub for semiconductor manufacturing. Maybe the first signs of uh, federal support for infrastructure bleeding over to new money supply in the muni market. Those uh, investments on the semiconductor side are driven by the CHIPS Act. And now the local governments in, in North Texas stepping up to provide essential infrastructure to help facilitate those investments. So uh, it's a trend we're going to watch nationwide You know, over the next months and, and years. It's a, it's a longer term trend, but certainly uh, moving in the right direction. So thanks for your time today, David. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Mike.